Well, good morning everybody. My name is Dr. J.D. Swanson, for those who don't know me, and welcome to our 15 minutes of thought. And today what I want to do is, and over the next few classes, is go through hand yonder, hand number four. And hand number four is really notable for a number of reasons. Number one, it's one of the first kata where up to now, if we think about shodan, nidan, and sandan, we really have all of the movements are just single notes. Ding, 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 right? With, and what you're changing in terms of the rhythm of the kata is the, the gap of silence between the moves, yeah? In hand yondan, it's really notable because for the first time, we've got elongated notes in there. Ding, 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 right? This kind of idea. And so this is the first time we see that. The second thing that's really notable about yondan is it's this beautiful expression of center control or center body control. So with that, let's go through the first part and then we'll go through the other parts through the other classes. Hey, Us. Very good. So <clears throat> the first move of Han Yonan is something that gives a lot of people a lot of trouble. For me, it's going to give me trouble. I'm going to tell you all right up front. I'm on sticky mats. It's slightly humid here in lovely Rhode Island. And so moving my feet on a sticky floor is going to be problematic. Nice wood floor, nice not so humid environment or a too slick environment is, is kind of what you want. So let's talk about that first move. When I was younger, when I was um, training with Kanazawa Sensei and, uh, and Goren Buchina Sensei, it was quite often we would actually start the kata this way. So the first move was drop straight down into stance, hands to the side, drop air here and then slowly coming up. Once I moved to America um, and we sort of went more in with the JKA, the idea sort of changed. It was the sort of subtle sliding out of the foot and what you would find is that people would often as they move sort of go and wonder why they couldn't necessarily slide. This is that element of center control that I was talking about. The idea of here dropping your weight straight down because um, Kokutsu Dach requires that, the straight drop, and then allowing this hip and the opposite hip to fan open. So the feeling is dropping straight down on a line. There's a beautiful video of Naka Sensei talking about this point, by the way, on the interweb if you, if you sort of Google it. So as you go down, feeling this opening of the hip as you slide down and pushing off both legs. So you end up with this idea of sort of here, ah, uh, this kind of action. And this is what you want, is that nice sort of spreading or opening of the legs of both hips, not just this one, but this drop and open as you do the technique. Ooh, here, ooh, here, ah, uh, here, here, this feeling. So it's this idea, the second you notice people cheat it, look, ma, I can move my leg. Or they go and can't move their leg, or they tie tape around their feet or what have you. The idea here is to drop and open. Ugh, this. Ugh, this. Ugh, this. This is the feeling that you want. So to start with, we're going to do something real goofy. Feeling here, just simply drop and open. Drop and open, drop and open, drop and open. Try that 20, 30 times to warm up. Off you go. Excellent. Okay, so after dropping and opening, the next piece is to time the hands. What you notice with a lot of people is quite often you'll see this very definitive sort of of the arms. It's not needed, I'm convinced from my own sort of thoughts, is that it's simply an illusion of dropping the hip to the side. So when you start the kata, the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got something to push off. So set this foot so the outside edge is parallel. Don't have your foot out, have it here. Now you've got something for the leg to push. At the same time, once you know, once you make that yoi, set it that way, then from here, as you turn the hip, notice my hands aren't really moving, but by simply me turning the hip to prep for the stance, that automatically pushes my left arm forward. This is the block, okay, almost a heiwanuke. So feeling here, just open and push, and then as you do the drop, hands and feet, hands and feet, 
hands and feet move together. So what I want you to do, again, floor sticky, have the feeling of this one breath. Right here. And so your body finishes, the foot continues to move, the body sinks. Uh, so the whole thing mm, settles all at the same time. So it follows your breath. So, uh, so your first movement becomes, and again, excuse the sticky floor, feels. Second move. as it goes. Okay, so feeling here. As it settles. Big breath. Give that a go. What you'll notice is initially, first few, even for me in the first set, first few timing might be off. And as you settle more and more in, timing, timing, timing becomes more and more together, together as you go. Give that a go. Excellent. Now from here, the next thing is what shape do your arms go? From here, they load, they're in Shizentai, you know, if you sort of point your fingers out, you can all, all sort of almost touch them, maybe with a little bit of electricity between them. Open them up, and then here, they remain, they take that same path. Elbow comes up, elbow comes up, like so. Again, expand out, expand up. Push, push with the elbows. So now, let's put the whole thing together. It's one, Two, hand, elbow, together. Then two, down, then expand across. As you go. Very good. So, give that a go real quick. Just those two moves. I've got one other comment to make on those first couple of pieces. Off you go. Excellent. So, there's also some variation in terms of from here about when you change stances. Some people change here and then up, right? Some people, like me, I go here and then move together. For me, I'm after that center control when I train in the kata. So for me, the bulk of the time, not all the time, but the bulk of the time I practice this, I am one of the here, down, and then push. And the feeling for me is I'm here, I drop, I grab hold of something solid, and I push my stance over. I have that feeling because again, I'm trying to understand my body center connection. My body center <clears throat> connection. As the elbow, hip, body, everything shifts together. That's what I'm after. So you can practice this first movement multiple ways. If you're interested in just sort of more the, the, the basic way, <laughs> Or other way. Or other way. All variations of the same coin, depending on what you're doing to your opponent. For me, the way I practice it, one, two this way. Give that a go. Give that first piece a go. Really feel the connection. Whichever way you choose, feel the connection between your elbow, your center, and what your legs are doing throughout each motion. For the first one, it's pretty obvious. Here, elbow, hip, knee. Yeah, this is what you're after. Once you're here, now same, same thing. Elbow, knee, as I move. This feeling. If you're here, now feel the connection here and here. Feel that and expand, right? The story's the same.
just in different places. Give that a go, rip into it, and we'll come back with the next part. Excellent. Okay, so we've done both the double blocks, boom, boom. And again, as you think about these, would I ever, you know, why are they done slow? Because they're hard. Here, Nida, something that uh, Ian Abernethy once said, which I thought was really smart, is he talked about Han Nida and Han Yondan as being sort of linked. So Han Yondan was really an expression of Han Nida if it went wrong. And so when you look at it, Han Nida is very much the sort of reactionary, bam, bam, right, kind of idea. Han Yondan, you're cooler because you're a green belt. So now, soon comes the attack, block, block, <clears throat> stab, right, bam, then grab. Right, this kind of feeling. It's got that more fluidity that requires the body center that you have or the body center that you have as you make those strikes or those attacks. So it's very clever that way. Right, moving on now. From here, we've just moved into this, this movement here. Now we're moving into the Jujuke. So be careful, a couple of things. As you step, people quite often load all the way to here, throw, get on, and throw the double block. Jujuke, in my mind, is simply an amalgamation of Gerambrai and Gyakuzuki. Okay, it's just those two techniques tied together. And if you have a look, because of where the hands are, if I do this sort of, the more classic way of pulling back, this one's further back, hello, than this one, hello. Right, as they go, uh, this fires in the Hami position, then Shaman. Right, and so this allows you that difference in distance that this hand has to go compared to this hand allows for that differential timing. So they don't arrive together, this would actually block a second or a split second before this hand. So as you make that movement, the way I think about this is I'm making Gerambarai and Hami and then shifting across to Shorman. Again, in the actual kata, it's so smooth, the transition, you don't actually see it, but that's really kind of the heart of what you're doing. So when I'm here, I load, then from here, one, get on the line, one, one, two, one, two. Kata, almost same time, but the feeling is there, it's that, that double beat, that compression, compression. Second thing that's important is as you move, try not to load all the way here. I know that's very fashionable, but it's highly impractical. Somebody's coming directly in on you. The last thing I would do is sort of expose all of this. For me, as I go in, I'm more here. There is a slight turn back, but I don't overemphasize it. So this elbow is still here, ready to move. And then it's simply an elbow drop hit. So as I make that hit, ah, uh, one, one, two. This feeling. So feel one, two. With that, give it a go, off you go. Awesome, almost too easy, right? So we've got our one, our two, three. And again, notice I don't move my hands, I don't do anything fancy with them. They're already in position for me. They're already in position, I don't need to do anything odd. They're already there, why make double action? Right, as I go. So once we've done the Jujuke, the next thing is of course the Marotayuke into Kokutsudachi. So feeling here, feel that load, notice my eyes, everything's gone this way, one, two. Now Marote, depending on how you load it, right, it can be loaded in any one of multiple ways. Some people, Koshi Kamae, forward. For me, the way I was taught, which I kind of prefer in this particular role, is here I'll twist my left hand all the way out, I twist my right hand over so it's palm down, and I place it right on the, the bead of my tricep. So I'll be here, I simply run this way. So this is the feeling, and then from here, ah, twist both in. The key thing is as you do the Marote Yuke, and remember it goes from Jujuke, Lowe's, Kokutsudachi, as it loads into that stance, don't have the feeling of driving forward, don't or don't have the feeling to translate to the stance of driving forward, don't have it knocking to the side. Remember, this has to be a finishing movement because it's the last time we're moving up in that direction. So what you need is your hands, think of it, and this is something Sensei Steve Ubel always talks about, is have the feeling that both hands 
and I've emphasized this before, are, are moving forward. So as you make that, as you make the UCK ones blocking, the augmentation is not about this sort of pushing feeling, it's about block punch, or it's about block punch. It's about that feeling. So what you've done is you've effectively jammed their attack, block strike, now from here, either throwing in and hitting, or just sweeping them out of the way and hitting, or hitting them with both hands. You want that feeling. The reason it's in Kolkutsadach is because I've just jammed them here. They haven't gone backwards. They're still right freaking here. So then, this is the feeling I want. I want that Titan feeling. Block, bang, connection as I go through and hit. So this is why it goes from forward stance to back stance. You're closing distance, yeah? So as you go through that, think about that motion. It doesn't matter whether you load Koshikamai or the longer load that I'm used to, but the feeling of this coming in and either clearing the way, blocking in and then hitting, or striking, striking, or blocking, striking, you want to have that feeling in there while remaining in back stance because the distance is close. So from here, think one load. Notice my hips can load, but my hands don't need to move. One, then load through this feeling, this idea, this flavor. Good. With that, practice the sequence. One, two. Excellent. That's as far in the kata as we're going to go today. But what I want you to think about is think about now the dramatization of the kata. And I can see many of my senseis sort of rolling their eyes and going, JD's an idiot. That's okay, he is an idiot. But think about the way that the kata sort of builds across these first four movements. Slow, slow. Now have contrast. Quick, quick. That feeling. Boom, boom. Right? So build a story within your kata. Build a story within the tempo that this creates. Remember, this one is probably one of the more musical, if you like. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. You see what I mean? You can create the story as you build the kata. So think as you go, think of the slow movements. The slow movements are boom, boom, right? Be careful of the length of your pauses. You don't want, as Sensei rightly says, these long pregnant pauses within the kata, right? And then you shake a little bit to show how tough you are. You don't want to sit here forever. The kata must flow within a piece of music. The kata, if I sit here, ding, 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 it, it, it's awkward. Feel flow, flow, flow. Feel that movement, feel that flavor, feel that taste as you move from one technique to the other. And so with that, practice those first four movements. Practice and boom, 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 boom. There's a lot to work on within there. And then what we'll do is next time we'll continue on with the rest of the kata. So with that, have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again soon. Hey, us. Thank you.